first of I really appreciate the great effort the committee puts into developing uh, <coughs> new features and maintaining Postgres. I also thank the organizers for giving me the chance to speak. I'm really excited. My name is Tatsuro Yamada. I came from Tokyo, Japan. I work for NTT Open Source Software Center as a database engineer. I have been working <coughs> various kinds of system developments in telecom areas. I used to be an Oracle database user for many years. And now, I focus on Postgres around three years. Recently, I consulted a group company about how to use Postgres and how to tune the Postgres. And sometimes, I fix the problems. I like listen to music, ski, beer, gadget, car, and so on. Please find me around if you have common interest. Now, I'm going to talk about the challenges of huge billion system migration. I have the two year migration project as consultant at one of the group company between 2014 and 2015. In this talk, I'm going to introduce barriers and solutions for our migration project. I hope to prove that Postgres can be used in mission critical field. And I hope to increase Postgres users and they will share new use cases. I'll, <coughs> I'll cover four points. One, background of the migration project. Two, three major challenges of the project, which we engage the barriers and solve them. Three, I will share some thoughts to the future of Postgres. Four, conclusion of the presentation. Uh, we'll, we'll have a question and answer session at the end of my, end of my presentation. Let's start story. Background. Uh, please allow me to introduce my company. Who are we? We are NTT. NTT stands for Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Corporation. Nippon means Japan in Japanese. And we are telecommunications carrier in Japan. We have 900 subsidiaries throughout the world. Now what is NTT OSA Center? We promote and adapt OSS to the group companies to reduce the total cost of ownership because there are a lot of <coughs> subsidiaries and which have a lot of systems. Uh, roughly 100 systems have migrated each year. Uh, we perform two main activities, consulting support and R&D. Uh, there are three relevant companies. The client is NTT Communications. The systems integrator is NTT Comware. The consultancy of Postgres is NTT OSS Center. All the companies co cooperate on the project. The target system is a uh, backbone billing system of telecom business which has several million corporate customers. The system never allows an unexpected shutdown, nor even an error in your lifetime. <coughs> it's a mission critical system. This system is similar to the core banking system. Let's take a look at the diagram. The system has four features, charge calculation, gradient and view, Collective management and analysis. <coughs> Please see the clockwise arrow from corporate customers. The corporate customers have several million contact, contracts, and they use 100. Ah, sorry, one, more than 100 kind of 
network services. Then the usage status is sent into the target system and it's calculated. The system sends the billing information to the corporate customers. It's a full loop. Why did we need system migration? There are three main reasons for migration on the system. One, lifetime. The legacy system approach end of life. Two, cost reaction. Everybody knows uh, pro proprietary software is expensive. So therefore, the project want to discard proprietary software for cost reaction, such as OS, DBMS. And finally, performance scalability. The contract number is increasing every year. Therefore, we have to use cloud infrastructure for performance scalability. Thus, the project decided to rebuild the system, including OS, DBMS application, table schemas, and language. Yeah, here you can see a software stack, uh, legacy and the target system. Cobol 2, Java, proprietary DBMS to Postgres, Unix to Linux, on premises to cloud. This is a tough migration challenge. This is a system image and requirement. Uh, 24-7 uptime. There are batch online and analysis, analysis processing in the system. Uh, there is a lot of batch processing, uh, around 5,000. Uh, more than one terabyte data sizes, and we have to use cloud infrastructure. Uh, let's take a look at the daily schedule. <coughs> uh, the system has two types of processing time window. The night time is time for batch processing. The daytime is time for OL2P and ORA, and requirements are strict batch performance requirement and <coughs> time correctness. OL2P and ORA work together during the day. What's, <coughs> what is the uh, important thing? The project focuses on three points and, uh, <coughs> and sets the project challenge. Yeah. Has anyone seen Japanese fireworks? Oh, great. It's not bad. <laughs> Let's get back on track. <laughs> Now, I will tell you three stories about how we accomplished the migration project. One, to run OLTP and OLAP without interfering each, each other. The customers think that OLTP <coughs> and OLAP to work together easily, but can we as engineers create a seamless integrated system using Postgres? Two, to guarantee performance on cloud. We must use the cloud for increasing the contract numbers, but there is a concern using cloud service, such as cloud service performance. Three, to ensure batch performance stability until end of life. <coughs> there is a, ah, sorry. There is a batch processing time window in the system. If batch is not finished, the online can't start. It's a problem. So we have to ensure batch performance stability, and we have to know the timing to enhance the facilities. OK. First, I will talk about OLTP and OLAP. The customer want to do real-time analysis. Also want to 
no negative effect on OLTP perform OLTP performance. So our pro <coughs> our solution was divide the database into two servers. they have a negative effect on each other. However, in our design, there is no scrambling for resources because there are two servers, each processing different resources. It's good. <coughs> Therefore, we decided to go with our design. So <coughs> we thought it we thought it would be easy to create and run a read replica, but we ran into a few problems. <coughs> the problem is this. While replay suddenly stops on the read replica, it means no real-time analysis. The, <coughs> the customer want to do a real-time analysis, but we couldn't. Why? because <coughs> there are many long queries. And uh, while replay conflict with queries, therefore, the while replay was making wait. This behavior is a side effect on this parameter. Max standby streaming delay e equals negative one. <coughs> Solution, we added this parameter, hot standby feedback equals on. <coughs> this parameter can, while replay is only selectively delayed. Thus, we need this parameter for aura. So, if you want to create a read replica, I recommend to check these parameters. That's all for one. Yeah. Next, I will talk about cloud. Uh, usually, resources are not guaranteed on a cloud environment. <coughs> but we need to finish the batch jobs before deadline. So there is a concern about hardware sizing on the cloud. What should we do then? Our solution is performance evaluation. We did the performance evaluation using the heaviest jobs. There are three steps. One, find the highest time zone on the resource usage graph. Yeah. And second, a uh, two, Pick up the jobs from the job schedule. Yeah. Finally, create the testing program and test, <coughs> test it. Uh, next is research. Um, I will use it was larger than expected. It is three times larger than the legacy system we were able to tell required IOPS numbers to the cloud vendor. And they promised us to guarantee the IOPS. Then we could manage to finish a batch processing before that run on the cloud. Yeah. With that, we are able to accomplish second challenges. Uh, finally, I will talk about uh, to ensure batch performance stability. It's most important story. <coughs> Why is the performance stability so important? Uh, we must guarantee the batch performance now and in the future uh, because there is a batch process time window and it can't extend. 
So we want to know a timing to enhance the facilities, such as CPU, memory, and so on. It's able to add extra resources before running out. Uh, <coughs> let's take a look at these graphs. It's just an example. The horizontal line is time. The vertical line is processing time. The yellow bar is contract numbers. On the left side, uh, the red line is processing time, and it's not stable. It means difficult to predict uh, on the future batch performance. On the right side, it's an uh, ideal. The processing time is linear trend. So it's easy to predict when to expand the facilities. Thus, we need the performance stability. <coughs> then, <coughs> we analyze the batch jobs to get the performance stability. The result is the batch execution time is almost equal to the query execution time on the system. <coughs> Therefore, we focus on the query execution time. What does query execution time depend on? We know it. Yeah, we know As we know, the answer is execution plan. How was the plan created and chosen? The plan is execution plan using SQL and statistics. And the uh, lowest cost plan is chosen. <coughs> uh, we know the planner makes a mistake sometimes because it is focused on cost estimation. Mistakes mean the planner makes an inefficient plan. Therefore, we need to avoid the planner's mistakes for performance stability. <coughs> what has been done to get an efficient plan? <coughs> this is a waterfall development model. We did this to get an efficient plan for each phase <coughs> in design phase, uh, redesign and entity and relation model. Next. Coding rule check, plan check, index tuning, in, in the integration phase, uh, performance test, statistic management, vacuum management. <coughs> so I think the performance test is the most important. This test uses a lot of data, which is similar to the legacy system. <coughs> the majority of queries met the requirements and were sta stable. On the other hand, some of the queries didn't meet it. These were unstable and unacceptable. So what happened? <coughs> In the some queries, by changing the value of such criteria, the execution time increased from several minutes to several days. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge problem. Yeah. Because <coughs> the execution plan is inefficient. The problem came from the planner. It means uh, optimizer failure. Imagine. If you are asked, which would you choose for the solution? The premise is, is here. And the selection list is here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, wait. One. <laughs> uh, 
rewrite query and application. It's been returned to implementation phase to wait for two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's wait wait for new version. Uh, it will to be it will to <coughs> improve from that. Three, give up the project. Wow. Four, <laughs> use forbidden fruit. Wow. <laughs> Almost people choose the uh, one. I suppose that. But we engage the Prana program, which came from optimizer era, and there is no time to release the system. Therefore, we choose uh, number four. You're right. <laughs> what is forbidden fruit? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a special tool for Prana. This tool can control a <coughs> control plan using optimizer hint. The name is PG hint plan. This tool for if the plan uh, doesn't give you desired plan, and this tool is, is able to control individual parts of the plan. Uh, set enable parameter cannot do that. Yeah. So <coughs> this is an exa example of hint. We can use hint as a comment in SQL, and we can control scan type, join methods, ordering joints, and so on. PG hint plan provides a lot of hints, uh, around 20 kinds of hints. OK. We know. I know. <coughs> uh, there is an optimizer hint discussion on the week. We know the discussion point. Then we check it and discuss it. Do you know this page? Mm -hmm. <coughs> we discuss the advantage and disadvantage of using hints. The disadvantage uh, for application called maintainability, it doesn't matter because we are only using a few hints to oh, <laughs> to doesn't scale with data size. It doesn't matter. We did a test and it was fine. <coughs> the advantage is it prevents optimizer error. This matters. <coughs> we had a problem, but the hint fix it. So we solved using these hints. The inefficient plans were divided to the efficient plan and were stable. We are able to achieve stable batch performance. The system could accomplish batch performance stability and to end of life. <coughs> what is the optimizer failure which we engaged? Our problem is classified into two categories. <coughs> it's a uh, low count errors. One, can't see through with it's deleted in with expression. Two, joint selectivity doesn't know about cross table correlation. <coughs> Next page, I will explain the pro two problems. Low count error by with. <coughs> there are two queries. The differences are limit number uh, 199 or 200. Uh, we can expect we can expect same plan and same execution time. All right. 
the result is this. Uh, plan and execution time are different. And there is a huge difference of load estimation. Why? And the execution time increased 1.5. Yeah, uh, by the low controller, the plan and time are changed. Why? <laughs> because the <coughs> common table ex expression doesn't have stati statistics, since it is a temporary table. CT means with expression. Yeah. The row. <coughs> Therefore, the row estimation is calculated using default values. The planner can't optimize the plan. Solution, PZ hint plan. <laughs> uh, we, can change the <coughs> we can change the plan using hint. And this I did here. Uh, the row estimation has fails. It's the same rows. But <coughs> the plan was changed. Therefore, the execution time is changed. It is same as executable limit 199. Yeah. Right. I'll talk about next example. Uh, row count error by cross table correlation. Uh, as we know, TPCH 29 is a famous example. Uh, we can reduce the execution time using the hint. Yay. <laughs> Next course. And the planner can't use joint selectivity with cross table correlation. And it excessively expected a small number of joined rows. In this situation, a nested loop is not efficient. Solution is hit plan. Uh, is anyone interested in the PG hint plan? Could you raise a hand? Oh, 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 well, thank you. This tool will be helpful, help, helpful for you. Uh, with that, we are able to accomplish the challenge. Let me summarize the points of the challenge. I talked to cover the three stories. One, to run with TP and OLAP. <coughs> we created a read replica for OLTP, ah, sorry, for OLAP using stream replication. Uh, make sure two parameters for OLAP. Two, <coughs> using cloud infrastructure. We did a performance evaluation because uh, IOPS is important. Postgres can use on the cloud. Finally, <coughs> batch performance stability. Uh, we must keep batch performance <coughs> because there is a time window. Uh, PG hint plan is useful for controlling a plan. When we engage the optimizer failure, it can become a strong weapon for users. The migration challenge was successful. The system keeps working stably since May 2015. <laughs> Next, I'll share some thoughts about the future Postgres. Yeah. Uh, 
the planner's estimation is sometimes our own. It's by planner's limitation or specification. Uh, by reducing the mistake, many users can reduce the tuning cost and developing cost. <coughs> uh, Postgres has set to enable parameters, but it's not useful to revise an inefficient plan because application scope is too broad. It, effect, it affects all nodes of a given type in the plan. However, PG Hint plan is able to control individual parts of the plan. Should we implement the optimizer hint to Postgres core? Yes. <laughs> or I have two ideas for the planner improvement. One, feedback loop for planning. Uh, we can get a new efficient plan using a past plan result. Actual rows and actual time <coughs> is uh, useful. Uh, it is similar to PDCA cycle plan to check action. Yeah, and uh, like uh, machine learning, it's a heuristic approach to improve uh, plan. Uh, two, plan cache uh, or plan table. Choosing and freezing an efficient plan from a plan cache or a plan table, it is useful for stable performance. Mm. This feature provides a plan management to users. Uh, <coughs> these are use case of feedback loop. Uh, if we can use a feedback loop, we can create an alternative run and we can validate uh, statistics. Next, the use case of plan cache or plan table. As I mentioned that performance stability is important for the mission critical system. Therefore, we want to the plan cash or plan table for plan management. <coughs> yeah. And we are coming to the end of my presentation, but I have a quiz for you. What is this animal? Do you know? Is it easy? Yeah, that's right. Elephant. Yeah? Oh, sorry, that's right. It's some of them say it's Yeah, <laughs> elephant. <coughs> this image was drew on about 300 years ago in Japan. <coughs> it looks like uh, they can't manage Postgres. <laughs> but <laughs> we have accomplished it. Just a kidding. <laughs> in conclusion, in this talk, I have shared my experience on the migration project in NTT. And my thoughts are about the future of Postgres. I hope that I was able to prove that Postgres can be used in your mission critical field. It's time to migrate. I'd like to finish by thanking you, thanking you for your attention. Thank you. Has anyone questions? Well, go ahead. Ah, sorry. Please talk slowly and uh, cut your sentence when you talk. Application. All right.
my process in. Uh, <coughs> yeah, or uh, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, ownership is uh, uh, mainly uh, quality management. Yeah, uh, to the relevant, uh, relevant system. And, ah, uh, uh, sorry, and the creative view. Is a uh, ah, uh, this is a uh, uh, the uh, or up query in this system. Ah, uh, sorry. Mm, right. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh -huh. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our processing, our, our business intelligence doesn't care how much the phone cost, the call cost. Mm -hmm. We care about whether it was answered or not. We can tell our customers if they have enough operators or not. We don't care about the, mm -hmm. the bills when we're doing the processing, but we do care about the data. So we care about the raw data simultaneously. And we actually have, have contention just getting the read access to the raw data fast enough. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm curious whether you have the same problem or not. Mm. Uh, right. I'll talk about uh, more details after this session. Okay. Yeah. Has anyone uh, <coughs> any questions? Uh, no. no. Yeah. <coughs> mm, okay, maybe okay. Uh, this system, uh, uh, this system uses uh, a few uh, nine point uh, nine point two point seven or eight, and it's stable since then. <laughs> So uh, this is a mission critical system, and we can't stop this system. <coughs> uh, Go ahead. Uh, 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 the system. Edge core CPU. Yeah. Um, memory is uh, sorry. I, I I don't I don't think now. <laughs> uh, 
Oh yeah, I I will send the details. Can I send the email to you? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you.